I'm holding in my hand the criminal complaint for Larry Miliete. Coming up next, hear from Maya Miliete's family about his arrest. Larry Miliete allegedly hired spellcasters to try and save his marriage, but what is a spellcaster? We take a closer look. Belongings believed to be those of the missing fiance of Gabby Petito and possible human remains have been found in Florida. The White House unveiled a plan to roll out vaccines for kids ages 5 to 11. Plus, what kind of carbon footprint are electric cars really leaving behind? We verify. The United States Postal Mail Sorter may have his limitations, but that's not stopping him from doing his job. News 8 at 6 starts now. Maya Miliete's family is still pleading for answers one day after Maya's husband, Larry Miliete, was arrested on suspicion of her murder. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Maya's sister spoke to News 8's Kirsten Holmes about the arrest. What's next for the family? And a question a lot of you have been asking us. What happened to Maya's children? She joins us live. Kirsten, how is the family doing? You know, it's been a long nine months for Maya Miliete's loved ones. I spoke to her sister, Mary Chris, and her husband, Richard, at their home via Zoom today. And, you know, that's where they were when they found out that Larry, their brother-in-law, had been arrested for Maya's murder. They say that the nightmare they've been living still is not over. I haven't really, you know, wrapped my, my, my head around it. Um, you know, it's just, um, it, this is still new, even though we've been nine months trying to look for my sister and one of the neighbors called us because they saw activities and you know in Larry's um, house and they don't really know what was going on um, it might be another search warrant they said or you know but there's tactical um, team um, that surrounded the house and 10 minutes later Mary Chris says she got a call from Chula Vista Police Chief Roxana Kennedy that Larry Miliete had been arrested that was a heartbreaking that to was hear. the hard part to listen to for her, I know I was standing there when she called and her face and everything just changed. Her attitude changed her and she just started crying. And now their focus shifts to what they say is the next phase. Our goal is to find, bring her home, my sister. Um, so that's been our main focus. And reconnect with Maya's children, who Mary Chris says they haven't talked to since January. We have to follow, you know, the rules the court. We as a family really, really wanted to to be with the kids because they're my sisters. You know, they're they're my sister. And um, you know, they're they're the only connection we have. Meanwhile, she thanks the community for the outpouring of support. It gives me strength that I'm not alone, that we are not alone, that the family is not alone, um, that there's people out there, you know, supporting us. I don't think we could have been made it this far without them. But she says it's not over and she still needs your help. Continue to help us, you know, and continue the prayers. You know, we are moving mountains. Continue sending us the messages because it gives us strength uh, to keep on going. Um, you know, for people that's been out there searching with us. And as for Larry Miliete, we're praying for him and that. I hope he'll have a change of heart and he'll he'll let us know where my sister is. Medicare says that they will be out again this weekend looking for Maya Miliete and they will not stop until they can bring her home. If you want to help look, you can go to their Facebook page, Help Find Maya. That's the name of the Facebook page. They'll share details about where and when they'll start the search this weekend. Kirsten, we heard Marty Chris talk about Maya's children. Where are they right now? Right now, they are with Larry Miliate's family. That was a court order that happened earlier this year. So Medicare says that she's confident the kids are being taken care of, that they just miss them and hope to see them soon. Hopefully they can uh, be reunited soon. Thanks so much, Kirsten. Meantime, Larry Milete's first court appearance is scheduled for tomorrow, but we're already learning new details about the case through recently filed court documents. They include new information about spellcasters Larry hired. So what are those? What exactly is a spellcaster? News 8's Steve Price takes a closer look. 
These court documents obtained by News 8 show the lengths Larry Miliette went to to try and prevent his wife May from ending their marriage. They include hiring spellcasters, people you pay money to to cast a spell over others. I've never had a case where that was involved. District Attorney Summer Steffen has seen a lot in her 30 years with the DA's office, but what's inside these court documents is a first. These spellcasters would be asked to make May want to stay in the relationship. We found more than a dozen spellcasters on the internet, most offering the same services that include love spells, voodoo spells, and stop divorce spells. According to the court documents, Larry was a frequent customer. Between September 2020 and January 2021, Larry contacted the websites daily, sometimes multiple times a day, purchasing spells and sending messages requesting help so that May would obey him, fall back in love with him, and to incapacitate her or make her sick so that she could not leave the house. In December, when it became clear that May was serious about leaving, authorities say Larry's tone changed dramatically. Specifically, one message from Larry on December 27th states, please punish May and incapacitate her enough so she can't leave the house. It's time to take the gloves off. And on December 31st, he emailed a spellcaster, she's only nice to me when she needs me or sick. Thanks again, maybe an accident or broken bone. He was asking for May to become incap incapacitated, for May to be in an accident, to have broken bones so that she could stay at home, thus displaying his homicidal ideations to harm May. The documents don't name the spellcasters Larry hired, but the ones we found charge anywhere from $30 up to $300. We should also point out that all of the websites have disclaimers similar to this. The spells, rituals, and techniques listed on this site are for entertainment purposes only. Steve Price, News 8. A month-long search for the missing fiancé of Gabby Petito may have taken a new turn. Investigators say they found possible human remains in a park in Sarasota County, Florida. As Elise Preston reports, the discovery comes a month after the remains of Gabby Petito were found in Wyoming. The investigation intensified in this thickly wooded Florida park after the discovery of what the FBI describes as items of interest. Earlier today, investigators found what appears to be human remains, along with personal items, such as a backpack and notebook belonging to Brian Laundrie. These items were found in an area that up until recently have been underwater. A dog and two spotters joined the search, as well as Laundry's parents, in a park connected to the giant reserve investigators have been combing for weeks. Our evidence response team is on scene using all available forensic resources to process the area. It's likely the team will be on scene for several days. They wanted to speak to the 23-year-old since the disappearance of his fiance Gabby Petito over the summer. The couple had been on a road trip when Petito dropped out of contact and disappeared. Her body was found in Wyoming last month and the coroner said she was strangled to death. We need answers. The case has drawn protesters from around the country demanding answers from the Laundry family. Anything that provides answers for Gabby Petito and provides justice for Gabby Petito, I am all for. I've been out here working my, my tail off 10 hours a day in this heat. Uh, for over a month, you know, trying to pressure the family for answers. Laundry's parents told investigators after their son returned to Florida without Petito, he headed into the woods and never came home. Elise Preston, CBS News. Homicide investigators are looking into a suspicious death in Bonita. Sheriff's officials say a deputy found the body of a woman while on patrol early this morning near Sweetwater and Quarry Roads. They say the victim appeared to have been shot. No other details have been provided. Anyone with information about this case is asked to call the Sheriff's Department or Crime Stoppers. A high-speed chase through the South Bay ended in a dramatic takedown by a police dog. National City Police say the chase through several freeways and on surface streets ended at 22nd Street in National City. That's where you see it there. Uh, the driver getting out of the car and trying to run away, but he just wasn't fast enough for that dog, which took him down quickly. Police say the man is wanted for a crime in National City, but they offered no other details. Children ages 5 to 11 will soon be eligible for a COVID-19 shot. 
Today, the White House unveiled its plan to roll out the vaccine for young kids immediately after it's approved by the FDA. News 8's Dana Marie McNichol has more on this detailed plan. Now, the CDC and the FDA will be discussing this over the next two weeks, whether to approve it or not. The White House expects a decision on November 3rd. The Biden administration has already bought 65 million pediatric doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Within days of FDA approval, the White House says the vaccine will be ready for the arms of 28 million children. At first, I thought the White House sort of got out ahead of the game again before the FDA and the CDC uh, really reviewed the data and made a recommendation. But I understand the need to prepare people. This is a big change. We need parents to start thinking about where they're going to get their kids vaccinated. Dr. Mark Sawyer is an infectious disease specialist with Radies Children's Hospital. He thinks an approval is coming our way. The Pfizer vaccine for kids 5 to 11 will be administered with a smaller needle, and the dose is made specifically for this age group. The dose is one-third the dose that older adolescents and adults are getting. But it's the same two-dose vaccine three weeks apart. Last month, Pfizer tested the smaller COVID-19 vaccine doses on 2,268 patients between the ages of 5 and 11. They say the trial was safe and generated a robust antibody response. I expect access to, to not be a major problem. The county health department is looking right now to make sure that we have sites around the community to serve the population. The administration looks to make vaccinations more convenient for families with clinics at doctor's offices, hospitals, pharmacies, community health centers, and even schools. Nationwide, more than 25,000 pediatric and primary care providers have already signed on to dispense the vaccine. There's no doubt that COVID is serious in children. We've had several hundred kids in the hospital at Rady Children's Hospital, including 70 in the intensive care unit. Parents need to understand that this is a potentially serious problem in children. And as long as the vaccine is safe and effective, the best way to get kids back to normal activity is to get them immunized. The Biden administration says states will continue to get support, including full reimbursement for vaccine and outreach programs.